and we are back for part three on my dad's uh, story of triumph. And today I've got three different uh, letters that I'm going to be reading to you all uh, related to him. They're very powerful because they let you know the type of gentleman he was and also lead you into why I began this journey of entrepreneurship. So with that being said, uh, the first thing I'm going I'm to do is read a letter that my dad wrote himself November 1986. And if you know about that time, you might know what was going on in, in the news. So here we go. I was reading the newspaper concerning so many people without homes at the Salvation Army. So I went to the Salvation Army and asked if I could take a family home with me for Thanksgiving Day dinner. The morning of Thanksgiving, I went and picked up a man, his wife and two children who was homeless and staying at the Salvation Army. I took them home with me to have dinner with my family. I remember this as well, side note. Uh, by me being epileptic, I knew Mr. Monte Weiner, uh, who is director of the West Tennessee Division of the Epilepsy Foundation. In 1990, Mr. Weiner had a six week training and placement program for people with disabilities and who could not find employment. Through this program, I hired Delzy. After working for me for approximately two years, Delzy is now assistant director of a daycare center I hired Maurice, and she worked for me approximately one year and is now secretary for Burlington Coat Factory. Because of my effort in employing people with disabilities, I was honored with several certificates. In 1995, after the Oklahoma City bombing, I drove out to Oklahoma City by myself because I could not find anyone to go with me. I felt that I had to go there and do what I could. I checked into a hotel and work with the Red Cross helping people fill out government forms for housing and counseling. I have never seen anything like that in my life. When you see devastation on t television, it is one thing, but, but when you see it firsthand, it is totally different. I met my wife in 1974. She had a six-year-old son named Roderick. That's my brother's side note. In 1976, we were married in one happy family. In 1979, I began the process of adopting Roger. In 1983, the adoption was approved. At that time, for a side note, I was four years old. Less than 5% of American men take the time to legally adopt their wives' children. They will accept their wives' children, but will not go through the trouble of adopting. I was told by the judge on the day of the final proceeding, I have had to hear lots of cases involving children, but your case is heartwarming. It takes a man to do what you have done today, Mr. Hill. I thank you and good luck. Now Roderick is married to two grown children, and that leads me into another uh, letter. Uh, this is one of the certificates he talks about. It was written by the Voices of Civil Rights. And it says, Dear Mr. Hill, Thank you for sharing your story with the Voices of Civil Rights Project. This certificate recognizes your invaluable contribution to the successful effort to build the world's largest archive of firsthand accounts of the American Civil Rights Movement. Your personal story, along with thousands of others from people across the country, will now be transferred to the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. The permanent collection will inform and educate future generations and inspire the civil rights leaders of tomorrow. You may take great pride in your contribution. Thank you for making a difference and please, dis please display your certificate proudly. Signed, the Director of the Voices of Civil Rights. And here is one other uh, dated April of 1999. It says, to whom it may concern, I am writing to you about my friend, Mr. Eddie Hill. I have known Eddie for 10 years as a business acquaintance and also as a friend. I am aware of his efforts to help less fortunate people, such as those with epilepsy, and inviting poor people into his home for Thanksgiving dinner. I am also aware personally of what he uh, will do for a friend. One day I was in his laundromat and having a discussion with an angry lady. He stepped between us and told me to go into his office. He started talking to the lady. I thought he might be mad at me for talking to her, but then a police car pulled into the parking lot and he came in at this time. 
I found out Mr. Hill had called 911 and then stepped between me and, and the lady because he saw a gun in her pocketbook, which she had in her hand. Mr. Hill risked his life for me. That is a true friend. It is also an indication of him helping to improve race relations because you see Mr. Hill's skin color is black. Mine is white. When my wife passed away in 1996, uh, Mr. Hill came to her funeral. I was truly touched by his expression of caring about me and my family. I am very proud to call Eddie my friend and he sure gets my vote. Signed, Mr. Regal. Guys, these stories have been very touching to me. Um, they also, again, not only let you know about him, but how I was raised and the environment I was raised in and, and how I developed this mindset of uh, wanting to achieve more, wanting to help people. So with that being said, guys, stay tuned. Tomorrow, I've got another, um, some more valuable information to, to let you know on. And this all, again, leads into why I have this burning desire for helping people people achieve their goals so with that being said i'll see you on the next video if you have not yet make sure you go ahead and subscribe to this video like comment and if you see that other people can you can use this tremendous value share it with others i thank you and i'll see you on my next video